Hey, hello, welcome. Welcome back to another episode of Planet Hunters Coffee Chat. I'm your host, Cassie. Joining me today is fellow co-host, Nora. Hey, Nora. Hi. So gosh, Nora, over the last few episodes, we've been talking about plotting data. We've been talking about binning it and normalizing it, making it look real pretty. It had that nice green color, which of course, you know, I got very excited about. So that was quite cool. And today for this episode, it sounds like that we're going to be bringing all of these concepts together and working on something called, initially I called face folding, and we know that's incorrect. It's called phase folding. And I hope that we're going to explain a little bit about what this is, why it's useful um, for you as an astronomer to use, and how we as citizen scientists can use this and have fun with it. So what is phase folding? What, why do you guys like to use this concept? Uh, yeah, let's, let's talk about phase folding. Uh, definitely not phase folding. We had some confusion. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. <not> <laughs> to- <laughs> um, all right, let me share my screen. Um, cool. All right, yeah, let's talk um, a little bit or briefly go over what phase folding is. Um, and this is not a notebook that you have to follow or write any code in. This is just uh, some code that I wrote before so we can um, kind of to help visualize what phase folding is. Um, so what you can see here is a, a light curve. And you can see we've seen this light curve before. It's got transits in it. And on the right hand side, we have the phase folded version. So the way that we, we got to that phase folded light curve on the right there is we defined um, kind of these periodic cuts that we make. You can see those by those dashed lines. So these are always separated by the same kind of distance, by the same period. And we cut the light curve up at those points and put those different chunks on top of one another. So this is something we discussed in the very first video um, and something that's very useful. Um, So yeah, so you can imagine this is a different chunk, this is a different chunk, and this is one. And you put those on top of one another and you get that nice plot there on the side. Um, so two kind of important parameters that you need when you're face folding something are this parameter that's sort of period. So this is the separation between those cuts that you're making and the value of T0. So that's just where you have the first kind of way where those are located. So in our case, mm-hmm. we have the period is the period of this planet. So the kind of the time between different dips that we see here. And T0 is the time of that first dip. Um, so maybe to, to get a grasp of what the, these parameters are, what period and T0 are, let's have a look at what happens when we get those wrong. Okay, um, good. Troubleshooting. This is what I need because I yeah. always tend to get things wrong initially. So we do like do to this. troubleshoot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so in this example here, we have in the top panel, we have the correct period and the correct value of T0. And in the bottom panel, we can see what happens if we get that period wrong. Um, so here, this these distances between these black dashed lines aren't the same as the distances between those actual dips that we see in the light curve. And you can see when you face fold them, that means that those dips just don't line up anymore. So if you see that, that means you have the period wrong and you're not face folding at that correct orbital period. Um, But let's have a look what happens when you get T0 wrong. And there's a lot of code in between and you can just ignore all of that code. Um, so here again, we have on the top, we have the, t- the T0 and the period correct. And in the bottom, we have the T0 um, wrong. Um, mm. And you can see those dips still do line up when you face fold it, but they don't occur at a phase of zero and they just occur somewhere slightly different, which in, its, in and itself isn't really a problem. Um, but it is nice to have those at zero so you can always immediately find them and it's it's useful to have them at, at this phase of zero. So it's good to have the T0 correct, but the period is that really important parameter that you really need to have correct. Um, but for now, let's let's try and, and do this ourselves and we'll, okay. we'll write some nice code. Okay, um, no guarantees, but let's give it a go. <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> we'll try. Um, so we're just gonna start off this notebook in the same way that we've started off other notebooks. So this is, as you said, um, tying together kind of all this code that we've already looked through in the last couple of episodes. So here we're just importing the libraries again. We're using this tick ID, which if you remember is my favorite tick ID. That's right. Um, <laughs> we know this tick ID. Everyone's gonna know it by the end of, of these videos. Um, here we are um, searching for what is available. We're then saying, so we're using the tick ID, we're saying we want to search the Spock data, and we're just going to use the first nine um, available sectors of test data that are available for this target. Um, okay. We're then downloading all of those sectors. So we're using this command download all, and we're stitching those together, which if you remember from a couple of episodes ago, that also normalizes the data so that they all fluctuate around one. Um, right. So it's, it's great that Lightcap does all of this for us. Um, yes. 
Cool. So like always, we want to visualize it. So we have that here. So we have this pretty purple light curve here um, of lots of different sectors of, of this very nice target. So next up is we want to face fold it. Right. So let's define the important parameters. We want to define the period. So let's make this graph a little bit. Um, so I know that the period of this target, it is my favorite target, so I know things about it. It is okay. 83.8979, I want to say. Um, we'll find out and if you, it's true. <laughs> and you knew this ahead of time. This is not something that you're just guessing, correct? No, no, this I know something this. that you find out? Okay. Yeah, okay. I know this ahead of time. <laughs> okay, so guess. people could... People can find out these the information if they do a different tick ID. Um, they can find it there. They can find it the periods in different ways, right? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. We can find okay. these online, or we can do different things to determine them, and we'll we'll go over all the different methods of either determining it or finding it online. Gotcha. Um, okay. But for now, we're going to assume that we know what it is. Um, and so, yeah, we've defined the period. Let's define t zero. So t zero is two one two five point eight four seven. All right, and we have run that. So now we're going to phase fold. So this, because Lycurve is such an awesome tool, is easily done with just one step of code. So we'll define Lycurve underscore phased is that Lycurve collection, which we have already defined above. And we just use a command called dot fold. Oh, okay. That will phase fold it for us. Very neat. And as always, you don't need to remember any of these parameters. They will all be given to you. Um, yes. But within this, we now need to define the period and the T0. So we need to give the code that. So we'll say the period equals that period that we just defined up here. And epoch time, which is essentially T0, so this is just a different phrase for it. I prefer to say T0, but um, like I've used epoch time. So we just define those in there as well. And that's done. But you- That's you done. Know. Yeah, well, don't take my word for it. Let's actually look at it. Um, yeah, like if I, it didn't give you an error message though, so that's got to be a good sign. It's always a good start. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's look at it. Let's let's make it a little bit prettier. So we'll do line width equals zero, color equals maroon. Ooh, I can't spell maroon. Maroon, and we'll say the marker is a dot. Oh, troubleshooting. There we go. There we go. Okay, so we have face folded it, but it doesn't look great yet. No. Um, so it this looks, is- ugh, It looks a bit like scattered and uh, to be honest, and I look at that, I can't even really, do, oh, I see. Okay, there's where the T0 is, but it looks, to me, I can't understand what, what I'm looking at here. Yeah, so this yeah. is so this is the face folded light curve, but as you said, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of scatter. We can't really see it yet. So let's let's just apply all the things that we've already done. We're going to bin the data. So this is something we looked at in the last episode. We have already normalized it. Um, we will kind of zoom in on it to make it look better, and hopefully we can make that that transit event, which is in the middle there, we can make it pop, and mm -hmm. hopefully that will show you why this face folding is is so important. So yes. as a first step, let's let's do that binning that we did before. So we'll take that like curve phased and we'll make a like curve phased binned. Uh, so like a dot phased and we'll do dot bin. Um, so uh, if you didn't watch the last video and this doesn't make sense, do go back and watch that last video. Um, so we'll yes. bin it to, let's say, 15 minutes. So if you remember, we have to put it into times of uh, units of days. So we'll do 15 divided by 24 divided by 60. 60, mm -hmm. I remember that. Yep. <laughs> still ringing a bell. Uh, and that worked. That bin, also worked. Bin end, it still works as bin end, yeah. Oh, well, that's okay. We can keep it as that. No, no, let's, Is that let's okay? yes. and, and define it as binned. So this star means it's still running, but we can just stop that from running. We'll get an error message and rerun it. Okay, now let's plot them all on that same light curve. So, sorry, not same light curve, on that same same figure. So again, if you remember from, from what we did last time, if we wanna plot multiple things on the same figure, we need to define kind of a plotting region. So we'll do that with fig x um, equals plt.subplots. We'll define a fig size, which we can make eight times five. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, and then we want to actually plot the thing. So let's do like curve underscore phased dot plot. And then x mm -hmm. equals x because we want to put it on these axes. Let's mm -hmm. make it look nice. So we'll do marker is a dot. We'll say the line width is zero, 
color equals, do you have a color preference? Blue, blue. Blue. Um, yeah. Then we can say alpha equals 0 0.2. Oops. Um, marker size, mm, we could, marker size. Uh, let's make it three and this this time so this is something we haven't done before but we're going to label it so because we're plotting multiple data sets we want to keep track of which one is which so let's label this as unbinned okay fantastic oh, okay now we're going to do exactly the same thing before the bin one so like curve underscore phased underscore binned and we did spell it correctly so i have to spell it correctly here as well and then we right. plot it so ax dot Oops, x equals x, marker equals, let's make these a dot so they look slightly different. So a circle instead, or not a dot, sorry, a circle instead of a dot. Circle, okay, yeah. We just want to be able to differentiate between them a little bit. So we'll make this color, let's make it gold. Oh, um, very pretty. Alpha, we won't make them as see-through, we'll make them 0 0.8. Oop, I can just see that I spelled this incorrectly. Marker size. And we'll make these slightly larger. So we'll make these marker size equal six. And again, we're going to use this new thing that we haven't looked at before of the label and we'll call this bind. All right. Now, before I run the cell, we're going to do two more things. So we're going to change the axis limits in the X axis and in the Y axis. So as you said, there's a lot of scatter around here and we only really care about what's just around the center because this is where the transit is. So we can get rid of all of the data that's kind of to the right and to the left of that. And we can do that by setting these. So this is the X axis and by setting a limit on that. So we can do that by setting, by saying PLT dot X limb and we'll just go from minus two to two. So you set a lower limit and an upper limit. And very right. simply, we'll we'll do the same. Oh, sorry. I just no, no. I was going to say, so it really just zooms in on that one area. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So we can we don't care about the rest. So we just want to zoom in on this this inner part by setting those limits. Um, gotcha. And we're actually we're going to do the same thing in the y axis as well. There's a lot of kind of white space up here and down here that we don't care about. So that's the y axis. So we'll do plt dot y limb, and we'll go from zero point nine nine six to 1.004 and let's see if that works Ooh. oh look at that those are interesting color combination <laughs> it's a beautiful um i don't know what i would call that it's, it's like uh, <laughs> it's like yeah yeah it looks kind of like i don't know maybe if i tilt my head to the left or the right or something no <laughs> but i can see what you're saying that with the the dots are now larger the circle and everything else. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so this is, this might be a bit easier to see. Sorry, the blue was nice, but yeah. and the yellow, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so what this shows is that if you, if you, well, first of all, if you zoom in, you can finally see that transit event that was there before, but we couldn't really see it. Um, and with those bin data, you can really start picking out both the depth of this, the shape of it, where it starts, where it ends much clearer than you did when it wasn't face folded and it, when it wasn't binned. So kind of this idea of, of face folding the data is you, you have multiple transits and you put them on top of each other to build up more signal because the more data you have, the better you can kind of characterize both the shape and the depth of it. And the shape and the depth, they're really important to then later determine properties of this planet. So the depth can tell you about the size of the planet, for example, um, which are things that we'll cover in, in future episodes. So with this, we're really, we're starting to get into what this planet actually is and, and what, what it could look like, um, which I think mm -hmm. is very exciting. It is very exciting. So this is something that you use quite frequently. I mean, this is not something where it's like, again, you know, we did some of the, the other bits with making it look pretty and everything. These are, this is like a real thing that you would need to use to really understand these, these planets a little bit more. Um, yeah. Yeah. If there are, very cool. If there are multiple transits, we always face fold them just to build up that signal. Um, so yeah, definitely something we do and something that's really useful. Excellent. Well, that's really cool. Oh, I can't wait to try this out a little bit more. And again, we, we always tend to use Nora's favorite tick ID, but that doesn't mean that you have to use that. Um, it's just an example. There's other ones that you can try and start building up and doing different bits. And of course, like as always, we're going to have um, all of this information so that you can follow along and link to all of the appropriate things. So cool. Is there anything else that you want to go over today, Nora, um, for this particular thing or is 
Is that enough for this episode? I think that's that's enough for one episode. But um, I think this this nicely ties together, um, kind of this mini series in the series of of how to yes. kind of get started with light curve. So this this episode hopefully tied together all all of those skills that we learned or looked at over yes. the last episodes. Absolutely. And as always, if you guys have any questions or comments or anything, we want to continue doing more of these kind of episodes. So it's really going to depend on your engagement in this. So please you know, let us know what other things would you like to see? Are there any um, other concepts that maybe you're struggling with? Or as I always like to do troubleshooting stuff, because gosh knows I'm always doing stuff where I'm like, Nora, I don't understand this. Um, so just let us know what, what, else, what other things would you like for Nora and I to take a look at? Um, and we'll, we'll talk about it and we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. <laughs> we'll, do it <laughs> we'll do it all. Exactly. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Nora, for going over all these bits. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing people work on it and until our next one, until our next episode. That's great. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Bye.